Hey folks, I welcome you all to Scalar Academy's YouTube channel. And in today's session, we'll learn how to cook. Oh, sorry. In today's session, we'll learn all about data science. So let's break down data science into its two components, which basically are data and science. Now, we have the social media upside called this Instagram. And whenever you upload photos onto Instagram, what you're doing is generating data. Similarly, if you upload videos onto any streaming service, what you're doing again is generating data. And if you do any sort of online transaction, guess what? You are generating data. Now, if we apply certain scientific techniques on top of this raw data, we get valuable information that can be used for varied purposes. And this is the process of data science. So in this video, we'll properly understand the entire data science life cycle through the simple example of how we cook. So let's get started. Let's say a client comes to you and gives you a problem statement. Now, for you to approach this problem statement, the first task would be to collect data. So this first stage is known as data acquisition or data collection. And what you do over here is you collect data from all the sources, from all the multiple sources, and this data will also be present in multiple formats. So to understand this through the analogy of how we cook, so let's say if you'd have to cook a certain dish, what you do is you collect all of your vegetables first and all of these vegetables would be different. So you'll have capsicum, tomato, potato, onion, and so on. Now, if you apply the same thing to data science, what you're doing is you're collecting all of your data and that data can be present in the form of a CSV file, a PDF file, a Word doc, and so on. So in the first stage, you collect all of these data items. Now, once you collect all of these data items, the problem is all of these data items are pretty raw or they have a lot of untidy elements in present in them. So in the second stage, you'd have to clean your data. And now, in terms of cooking, what I do is once I have this raw data with me, I'd have to clean this data. So let's say I have this uh, bowl of water. So I'll just put my vegetables into this bowl of water and I clean my vegetables. And if you have to understand this in terms of data science, what we do is I take my raw untidy data and I remove out all of the anomalies, outliers and whatever other things I do not require. And once I convert my untidy data into tidy data, this is where my data cleaning is done. After this, once I thoroughly clean my data, I'd have to understand my data in a better way. And over here, this process is known as exploratory data analysis, because what I'm doing is I am properly understanding the underlying features of my data. So in terms of cooking, what I do is once I have my proper tidy data with me, I chop it down into simple parts. So here, what I'm doing is I'm wrangling the data or I'm managing the data or manipulating the data so that I can further understand the interesting properties of it. So this is exploratory data analysis. And after exploratory data analysis, once I have chopped up my data and properly understood its interesting features, what I'll do is I'll go ahead and apply certain machine learning algorithms or data mining algorithms on top of it. And this is the main part of any data science life cycle. So depending on the problem statement, you can apply a classification algorithm, a regression algorithm or a clustering algorithm. So. Again, in terms of cooking, what I'll do is I will have a cooking utensil. So let me just take this cooking utensil and let's just consider this as our ML algorithm. So what I'll do is I will feed my data into this ML algorithm. So I'll take all of these chopped up data items and I will put them up into my ML algorithm. Now, once I put all of these into my ML algorithm, what I'd have to do is I'd have to properly train my data. So yes, you can consider as me training the data items. Now, once the training is done, what I'll get is the final result. So let me also get my final result. So here, what I have is my final result. So I've applied my ML algorithm on top of my data, and this gave me a particular result. It's not necessary that the result which I get is correct. So what I do over here is I evaluate the result. And this stage is known as pattern evaluation. So what I'll do is I'll just go ahead and taste what I've cooked. Hmm. So it seems like this might need a bit of salt. And this is where 
I evaluate my data and I keep hyper tuning it or I keep tweaking it so that I get the optimal result. Again, in terms of cooking, what can be understood over here is since this lacks a bit of salt, I also have salt tree. So I'll just put two or three spoons of salt into this so that I get my perfect dish ready. Now, once I have my perfect dish ready, I can go ahead and serve it to my guests. And this stage is known as knowledge representation. So once everything is set, I'll go ahead and serve this particular dish to my guests so that they can go ahead and happily eat it. In terms of data science, once my final result is set, I'll go ahead and show this to my clients in the form of beautiful graphs or beautiful dashboards so that they can use it for better business insights. So folks, this was all about data science and we've understood the process of data science through the simple example of cooking. So thank you very much for watching this video. And if you find this video insightful, do not forget to like this video and also subscribe to our channel. Thank you very much and let's meet in the next one. You all would have heard this term at least once in your life. Such is the kind of buzz that artificial intelligence or AI has created. Almost everything in today's world uses AI in some way or the other. Be it your daily Netflix recommendations or predicting the stock market prices. With more and more data being generated each day, the need for technologies like AI is now more than ever. So what really is artificial intelligence? AI is the science of simulating human behavior in machines that are programmed to perform tasks like humans and mimic their actions. Any machine that exhibits human-like traits such as problem solving and learning constitutes AI. Ever wondered about how a Tesla drives by itself from one place to another without the intervention of any humans? This is possible due to AI. You would be surprised to know how that AI is not a new technology. It all started with the simple question, can machines think, which was asked by mathematician Alan Turing in the year 1950. A side note, Alan Turing was the man behind decoding the Nazi encryption machine called Enigma, which led to the victory of Allied forces in the World War II. The term artificial intelligence was first coined in the year 1955 by John McCarthy from Dartmouth College, Nathaniel Rochester from IBM, Marvin Minsky from Harvard University and Claude Shannon from Bell Telephone Laboratories. The first artificial intelligence program, The Logical Theorist, was presented by Alan Newell, Herbert Simon and Cliff Shaw at the Dartmouth Conference in the year 1956. The program was designed to mimic humans' problem-solving skills and went on to prove 38 of the 52 theorems of Principia Mathematica by Whitehead and Russell. From imitating mere problem-solving skills to currently building driverless cars, we can see the significant improvement of AI over the years. Now, how does AI work? The main principle of AI is feeding input data, processing it, analyzing it for any patterns or correlations, and then using these patterns to make predictions or future decisions. Therefore, it emphasizes on three human-like behaviors, learning, reasoning and realizing. Learning. In this stage, the main focus is to acquire data and make rules or algorithms as to how we can turn that data into something useful. After defining a certain number of algorithms in this learning stage, we now have to choose which is the best one for the task. This is done in the reasoning stage. In the realizing stage, the algorithms are trained over and over again with the right data to ensure that they provide accurate predictions and make important decisions. With that, now we will look into four major subdomains of AI, namely machine learning, deep learning, natural language processing and robotics. We will now be discussing these in detail. Firstly, let us look at machine learning. Machine learning or ML is the idea or the science of computer programs that can automatically learn from their previous experiences and adapt to the new challenges without any human intervention. It is one of the most used and demanding fields of AI and that is the reason we will be discussing it more in detail. The machine learning algorithms are coded in certain order to perform tasks, analyze and predict information from the given data. And depending on the type of data that is available and what they want to be predicted out of the data, ML algorithms can be divided into three types. Supervised learning. 
Supervised learning algorithms are the most commonly used type of algorithms. You may ask why? It is due to the fact that they're simple and easy to implement. The input is in the form of label example pairs which are usually in a text, spreadsheet or a CSV file. These label example pairs are fed one by one to the learning algorithm allowing it to predict the right label for each example. The algorithms are focused on one single task or a problem. An example of a label example pair is as shown below. Here you can see that the employee name, employee ID, gender, position, department and employee satisfaction are all attributes of one dataset. Moving on to the next one, unsupervised learning. We can say that supervised and unsupervised learning are two extreme ends. Here we do not give a specific target for the model nor do we give it a feedback. Instead, the machine only has to find a way to learn by itself. Input data is usually in the form of unlabeled data and unstructured data, which is basically data that contains missing values or unknown data. Examples of unstructured data include text files, flat files, system logs, etc. Moving on to the next one, we have reinforcement learning. The models in reinforcement learning are trained to make not one, but a sequence of decisions in an interactive or a complex environment by using the feedback from its own previous experiences and decisions. Here the models use trial and error methods. An example of this would be self-driving cars. The input data here consists of data from a wide variety of sensors on the car. If you guys want to know more about machine learning, there is a dedicated video for that for which I'll be providing the link in the description box down below. Moving on to the second subdomain of AI, Deep Learning. Explaining this will be easier now as we already know what machine learning is. We can say that it is a type of AI that teaches a computer to behave exactly like that of the human brain. From the learning stages to predicting and classifying information, a deep learning network processes and analyzes data like how a normal human brain would process it. This is done with the help of neural networks. Neural networks are a set of algorithms that are modeled after the human brain with recognizing patterns as the main motive. Structure of a neural network consists of a number of nodes which are loosely designed to compute like that of a neuron in the human brain. Typically neurons are arranged in a series of layer, the input layer which receives various forms of data from the outside world, the hidden layer, this is where the computations happen. This layer consists of many units and its main job is to convert the input data into something that can be used by the third layer which is the output layer. An analogy of deep learning would be that of a child who is learning a new language. The next subdomain of AI is natural language processing or NLP as it commonly called. NLP deals with communication between humans and machines by natural language. The technique involves processing of human languages and it enables the computers to read and understand data, mainly by imitating human natural language. In layman words, NLP algorithms try to break down the language into shorter, simple pieces, understand the correlations between those pieces and determine how the pieces can be put together to create meaning. NLP is important as it makes it possible for computers to hear speech, read text, interpret it and determine which parts of the text or speech are useful. Some of the applications of NLP include speech recognition, Twitter's sentiment analysis which is used to filter hate language from various tweets and spam detection. Lastly, we'll move on to robotics. As the name suggests, robotics involve the programming and designing of robots. Robots are often deployed to perform tasks which are laborious and difficult for humans to perform. Robotics is probably the only field where software, electronics and mechanics are brought together. It has computer programs that tell the robot what, when and how to perform a particular task. It consists of mechanical components for performing that task and it has electrical elements for providing power and controlling the machinery. Some of the main applications of robotics are manufacturing, military applications, outer space applications and health service. With the number of applications of AI increasing each day, people might only think of one question. Will AI eat up jobs in the future? Not all the applications of AI are the same as factory automation or robotics. 
industry sectors which involve manufacturing goods and products thrive on efficiency and low cost they would save so much investing on ai when compared to investing in human labor in fact some factories in the world have already made their complete process automatic and there are more factories which will follow the same feat in the future but there is no need to panic because reports from various giant firms state that ai will create a plethora of new jobs experts also think that if anything ai will do in the future it will be creating new jobs the jobs we don't even know that they existed in the first place in fact pwc predicts that over the next 20 years ai will create around 7.2 million jobs in the uk alone that being said yes it will displace some jobs but not all the jobs in the world i hope this gave you some clear cut insights on what ai is how it works and the subdomains of ai please do subscribe to not miss out on more such content keep learning and goodbye